As we witness the black flag of Al-Qaeda again flying over cities such as Fallujah, which we had won at the cost of so much American blood, we wonder how it is that for Christians in Iraq, life appears to be worse now than it was under the vicious dictator Saddam Hussein. That was Representative Chris Smith from New Jersey talking about the persecution of Christians in Iraq. While for most of the world, the only quote religious story is the treatment of homosexuals at the Olympics this year, some people are bold enough to talk about the continued oppression, intimidation, murder of Christians worldwide. And our guest tonight, Pastor Stephen Anderson from the Faithful Word Baptist Church, is going to talk more about this subject. You may recognize Mr. Anderson as the Checkpoint Pastor, who not only fights for your First Amendment, but your Fourth Amendment as well. Pastor Anderson, thank you for your time, sir. Thank you so much for having me on. And our pastor, we see a lot of uh, talk about the Olympics. They talk about the gays and the mistreatment of gays and the things going on over there in Russia. And we see the media siding with the homosexuals and also politicians here in the States. But what do you think about the pretty much null, null and void response as far as Christians being persecuted overseas? We see the situations in Iraq. We see the situations in Syria where it seems like every week. There is a new video of Christians being beheaded or villages being raided and plundered. What do you think about this discrepancy as far as media coverage? Well, they're going to cover what fits their agenda. I mean, no matter what the subject, that's what the media is going to do. And, you know, the Bible tells us, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. And it says against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And we know that the people that are running our government, the people that are running the media, are satanic. I mean, they're evil people, and they have an agenda to promote anything that's anti-God, anti-Christian, like homosexuality. They don't want to talk about Christians being persecuted because it doesn't fit their narrative. Exactly, exactly, Pastor. Now, I want to stay on this topic of the media. I don't know if you've had a chance to see, but the, uh, the new trailer for the Noah movie starring Russell Crowe, I was watching it just a few minutes ago while I was back there in the studio, and it seemed like it had some type of big epic battle scene, and there's been a lot of other discrepancies with uh, the way the movie's portrayed. Have you heard anything about this, and what are your thoughts about this type of film? Yeah, I've heard a little bit about the movie, and uh, the, the thing that I read about it made it sound like the movie had an environmentalist-type slant, like the reason that God flooded the earth was in order to uh, save the environment, you know, because humans were just such a pollution of the environment. But in reality, the Bible says that the reason that God flooded the earth is because the earth was filled with violence, because mankind had become corrupt and wicked and ungodly. So these biblical movies put out by Hollywood, just like all the movies put out by Hollywood, have an agenda, and it's not a godly agenda. It's not a Christian agenda. And, you know, frankly, I don't think Christians should go see the movie. I, th I think that uh, they're trying to attract Christians into the theater so that they can then be brainwashed with the message that they want to give them, which is actually uh, an environment worshiping message, not the message of the Bible. Exactly. Now, I don't know if you had a chance to see this series. I believe it was put out by the History Channel, The Bible. Are you familiar with that, Pastor? No, I'm not. I haven't seen I don't have a TV, so. Oh, okay. Well, well it's good because uh, I'm glad you missed out, or at least your children missed out on these uh, recent Grammys. I don't know if you heard all the talk about that, but uh, supposedly a satanic ceremony being perpetrated at the Grammys. One gospel singer actually walked out saying it's a very disgusting display of uh, just Satanism. Right. I mean, that's why I got rid of my TV over a decade ago, because I didn't want my children to be programmed by the media. And I didn't want them to be exposed to that kind of filth. And, you know, Christians are being desensitized to this stuff today through television, through the media. And, you know, we as God's people need to beware of this stuff. I mean, it's it, it, all it is is tearing down our morals, tearing down our family values, tearing down uh, any kind of Christianity or decency, because that's just going to make it easier for the new world order to achieve their goals of, you know, one world government, one world religion. You know, Christians are an obstacle to that because Christians uh, take a stand for uh, one God, you know, uh, the Bible, we don't, we don't just buy into this thing of, hey, all religions are the same, let's all join hands, let's all unite, and uh, so therefore, you know, they're going to keep attacking Christians and Christian values. 
Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. You talk about the one, uh, the new world order, the one world government, the one world religion. Can you break that down a little bit more in depth for our viewers? Because people, they hear these terms, new, new world order, and they're like, well, what does this have to do with Christianity? Can you go a little bit deeper on that, Pastor? You know, it has everything to do with Christianity, and I find it hard to believe that any Christians today still uh, call the New World Order a conspiracy theory, because I don't see how you could be a Bible-believing Christian and not believe that there's going to be a one-world government, a one-world religion, a, a cashless society. These things are described very clearly in the book of Revelation. Um, you know, I encourage people to watch After the Tribulation, the documentary that we put out a year ago. It's available in the InfoWars store, also the Book of Revelation series that we put out, because the Bible predicted these things before they even began to happen. And now that we see them happening, we look at the Bible, and it's so clear uh, what the agenda is. Uh, another film that we're actually coming out with in less than a month is called New World Order Bible Versions. Wow. And uh, not, not only are the global elites persecuting Christians, as you brought out, but also, you know, when they can, they want to co-op and they want to infiltrate Christianity as well. And, you know, they, yes. want to get, they want to get to the pastors and brainwash them. You know, of course, we've talked about the FEMA pastors, the, the pastors. The that clergy have, response teams. The clergy response teams, the pastors who've been contacted by FEMA and, and told how they can, you know, bolster the government in a state of emergency and talk people into turning in their guns and, and going along with government and so forth. And uh, this new movie, New World Order Bible Versions, is going to show how the new Bible versions that are being put out by these giant media corporations, these media outlets like Zondervan, you know, and, and uh, the News Corp and all these big companies that are putting out their own new versions of the Bible, they actually use the term new order in the Bible. They've inserted that into the New Testament, and they say, you know, that when Christ comes back, it's going to be the new order— they also change passages like Romans 13 to be more pro-government and, and to just tell people to obey the government no matter what. Wow. And uh, so, it, it, you know, if they can't beat Christians, they'll join them. So we've got to be careful as God's people that we don't get sucked into this. Not only are Christians being persecuted, but also they're being infiltrated with, you know, Bible movies that mm -hmm. actually twist the truths of the Bible, Bible versions that uh, promote the New World Order, that, that, that actually attack doctrines of Orthodox Christianity. You know, I, I stick to the King James Bible, the Bible that we've used for 400 years, and, you know, I wouldn't mess with these new Bibles that are being put out every week and, and uh, that, that, that change things and remove entire verses uh, for the agenda of the people that are putting these things out and for their financial gain. Uh, the, the trailer for the new movie, if people would just go on YouTube and just search New World Order Bible versions, first six minutes, because we put the first six minutes of the film on YouTube and uh, just see what they're doing to Christians. Exactly. Now, I've seen After the Tribulation, I have to catch up and uh, see some of your other films here, Pastor. But I'm glad you brought up this point, talking about how these churches are being used to infiltrate, because people don't believe that. They'll go to church every week. Well, you know, I went to church, and maybe the pastor did say I need to turn in my guns. I went to a, a church, uh, I guess, a few months ago, and they're talking about how the TSA has to pat you down because that's the world that we live in now. I'm like, and, you know, it always boggles my mind when I meet older people, you know, people 50 plus years old, and they tell me, well, that's the world we live in. You have to do this now. I'm like, well, there's always been terrorists and, you know, people who want to harm us, whether it be as a country, as individuals, whether it be for your religion, as we're talking about here today, there have always been attacks against us. So now we have to give up all of our rights and our privileges, our God-given rights, things that are reaffirmed by the Constitution, not given to us by the Constitution, but reaffirmed. Now, I know you can't see this graphic here, Pastor, but I have this study, the Pew Research Study. It says the Christians are the most oppressed people on earth as far as religious groups, and we beat out, as Christians, we beat out Muslims, Jews, others, folk religions, Hindus, Buddhists, uh, all the above. We, uh, <laughs> we're the at the top of the peak right there. So in closing, Pastor, why do you think this is? Is it, you know, is it the end times? Why is this? Well, you know, we may be living in the last days, but one thing that we know for sure, the Bible tells us, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You know, the Bible says, marvel not, my brethren, if the world hates you. Now, the new Christianity is a, is a Christianity in America that, that doesn't want to suffer any persecution, 
So they want to go along to get along with everything. But the Bible makes it clear that if you're a true Bible believing Christian, you will be persecuted. That's part of the of the deal. That's that's what I'm glad. You know, I'm, you're bringing up so many great points here, Pastor, because a lot of people think about modern Christianity, even churches I've gone to. Alex talks about this often. You go to the church, and the church is you know run around, five, high five ten people, and tell your boss to give you a new Cadillac. It's not about the 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 suffering and not just you know suffering just for suffering's sake but you have to suffer for christ you have to pick up your cross daily you're going to suffer persecution you're going to be laughed at you're going to have people poke fun at you you're going to have uh, your rights and your beliefs tarnished and diminished by other people but you're saying and what is definitely true in the bible that you're going to go through these trials and it's how you go through them you're exactly right yeah you just hit the nail on the head Exactly. Pastor Anderson, I definitely appreciate your time and go to the InfoWars shop and pick up after the tribulation. Well, that's it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Jakari Jackson and we'll see you again tomorrow night.